scientists recognize that all known explosions decrease order and structure and increase chaos. The idea that the cosmos evolved also violates the second law of thermodynamics known as entropy. The second law states that as time advances, the universe becomes less ordered. Over time, all systems left on their own proceed in a direction from order to disorder. All of us witness entropy every day as we see things age and deteriorate. This breakdown of structure directly contradicts the theory of evolution. Now the second law allows you to increase in order like a baby growing into adulthood or seed into a tree, but if and only if you have an outside energy source and a harnessing mechanism to capture that energy, evolutionists don't have that. As Sagan said, the cosmos is all there is, there ain't no more. There is no outside energy source. So the second law is absolutely contradictory to the Big Bang Theory. What we see in cosmology is this. Everything we see, things are running down. Stars are burning up their fuel. Once in a while, a star will explode and goes from order to disorder very quickly. But the only thing we see in the universe today is the universe is running down. It's deteriorating. It's going from order to disorder. It's going to less and less organization. There is an observation that scientists make in every field of science, and it's generally called the laws of entropy. It's as if the universe was wound up somehow and is winding down. Scientists that study cosmology uh, talk about the ultimate heat death of the universe. Conceptually, it's quite clear from what we know that the universe ultimately sometime, billions of years from now, everything will become of uniform temperatures. There'll be no difference in temperature to exploit to get useful work. That the universe had to be designed and ordered in the finite past has not escaped the attention of secular scientists. NASA scientist Robert Jastrow wrote, the second law of thermodynamics applied to the cosmos indicates the universe is running down like a clock. If it is running down, there must have been a time when it was fully wound up. The next obvious question is, who wound it up? Gordon Van Wylen addressed the question squarely in his book, Thermodynamics, when he wrote, the author has found that the second law tends to increase his conviction that there is a creator who has the answer for the future destiny of man and the universe. We only see destruction, we never see innovation. And this, I think, is what the creationist model has been proposing all along, that in the beginning, things were very good. They were perfect, just like God wanted. But then, as sin entered into the, to the universe and God's curse on all of creation because of that sin, the wages of sin is death, not only in the physical life, but in the universe, everything is dying. The, the sun is burning out, the moon's orbit is decaying. Everything is in this process of death and decay. Evolutionists and creationists agree now that the universe is finite. Space and time and matter had a beginning, beginning with the studies of uh, Albert Einstein in the early 1900s on through this century. Scientists are in agreement that space, time, and matter did indeed have a beginning. 20th century science, embarrassingly, has confirmed the, the biblical view because the great discovery in cosmology is that the experts have agreed that the universe had a beginning and the, uh, they call it a singularity. You see, the whole Big Bang idea really is, first there was nothing, and then it exploded. The fact that the universe is finite, that it had a start, is a, is a key fact, but a very, very awkward fact uh, for the evolutionist, because it really raises an issue they won't deal with, and that is what happened prior to that singularity. The creation model has always anticipated a finite universe. In the first verse of Genesis, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible also states that time had a beginning. In 2 Timothy, we read, God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amazingly, the Bible even explains entropy. Of old, 
you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment. If the universe did not originate from an explosion, the only other option is that it was created, an option that many scientists are not willing to consider. Almost all scientists would try to find a mechanical explanation of how the stars, the galaxies, the planetary system came into existence by purely mechanical means without any intervention of, um, of a god in creation. To my mind, they have utterly failed. If you look at the planetary system alone, there have been several explanations trying to uh, show how the planetary system came into existence without any preformation by God, and each one has failed uh, miserably. Many observations contradict the current theories on how the solar system evolved. The most popular theory holds that the solar system formed from an interstellar cloud of swirling gas and dust. If the sun, planets, and moons evolved from the same material, they should have many similarities. Yet each planet is unique. Since about 98% of the sun is hydrogen or helium, Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury should have similar compositions. Instead, much less than 1% of these planets is hydrogen or helium. If the solar system evolved, all planets should spin in the same direction. But Pluto and Venus rotate backwards, while Uranus is tipped on its side and rotates like a wheel. All moons in our solar system should orbit their planets in the same sense. But at least six have backward orbits. Furthermore, Neptune, Saturn, and Jupiter have moons orbiting in both directions. Growing a planet by many small collisions will produce an almost non-spinning planet, since the impacts will be largely self-canceling. Yet, all planets spin, some much more than others. Growing a large, distant, gaseous planet such as Jupiter or Saturn poses an insurmountable hurdle for evolutionists because gases dissipate rapidly in the vacuum of outer space. And even young stars, similar to our sun, do not have enough orbiting hydrogen or helium to form even one Jupiter. Scientists have no answer as to why four planets have rings, or why each planet is so unique. Theories on the moon's origin are also completely inadequate. The moon's elements are too dissimilar to those of Earth's, and its orbital plane and circular orbit offer strong evidence that the moon was created in its present orbit. There is no evidence that the planetary system could have come about by mechanical means. However, the more that scientists began to look at the amazing universe that they inhabited, they began to realize that there were certain factors that were simply very, very fine-tuned for the existence of man, of molecules, of organic And the more they looked, the more they realized that we are in effect on really quite a knife edge. And there are many, many indications that this universe has been very specially designed and man is at the very center of it. If we try to model the universe as we know it, as we try to build a mathematical model that reflects what we know, we quickly discover there are thousands of parameters and ratios that if you adjust, then even a little bit, life is impossible. We quickly discover that the Earth was a little closer, a little further from the sun. It's either too warm or too cold. If it turns at a little different speed, if the masses are a little different, it would hold too much or too little atmosphere. As you start trying to model this, you quickly discover that all the parameters involve an incredibly delicate balance. And so they call this the anthropic principle, meaning it's as if everything we know was skillfully designed or balanced for man. The Earth is at a very specific distance from the Sun and they have calculated that if we were only 5% closer the water would boil off from the oceans 
if we were just one percent further away then the oceans would freeze and that gives you just some idea of what sort of a knife edge we are on the surface gravity of the earth is exactly where it needs to be more you have too much atmospheric pressure less you don't have an atmosphere